Hey developers, today we're gonna to talk about asynchronous components inside Vue.js. So did you know that you can load your components asynchronously, meaning that you only load them when you need them? So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to do that, how to create your asynchronous components, what it looks like, what the chunks look like inside your inside your app. We're gonna talk all about it. It's gonna be really fun. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. Hey, and if you're a Vue.js fan, make sure, I actually have a link in the description below where you can get the first chapter in my book, Vue.js in action for free. So make sure you check that out and let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, .tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly, available. And that's what's really cool about .tech Domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available and the .tech Domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like Hollywood.tech, Viacom.tech, even personal sites like AustinEvans.tech. So if you guys are interested and you want to search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off on one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and go ahead and pick up that domain name. Thanks. Let's imagine now that we have a pretty big app, but we only have two or three actual pages that are represented in the views folder, but we have hundreds of components that have lots of information. And we have all this logic in each one of these pages that'll kind of jump in between these different components depending on what you're doing. Now, how would you lazy load that? And in fact, you can do that with asynchronous components, which is really neat. Let's create a new component right now and we'll call it, uh, we'll call it list.view. And we'll create another one called um, myhome.view. And so this is two new components. I'm going to go to the home view and I'm going to delete out the hello world. And I'm going to load these two components. So I'm going to first, well, we'll do this. We'll delete, world, we'll delete hello world. And we'll import from we'll import list from components, and that's going to be list. And then we'll also have my home, and we'll also import that in my home. And we'll let, put the two here, and then we can now add them in here. Let's do my home which we'll have to put in brackets. And we can do, we can go ahead and automatically close it and same thing with list. Okay, so we have both of them here in list view. I have to actually add something to it. And we'll just put an h3 list view. And my home, once again, we'll just put here and we'll go at my home. So if we did this all right, we should have it. Yep, we see I have my home and list view. Now this is on the main app component, um, on the main home component itself. We have this list and home. Let's change it out. Let's 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 in my home. Let's move my home over from the main app, but put it in. Well, let's do this. Let's move the list to my home. So we're going to go to the my home and we're going to add the list component and we're going to move my home. Oops, move the list to my home as well. And now we just need to import it in. So we do components. Oops, we'll do do this the right way components. And we'll list, we'll do list. So that should show up under my home. And we'll delete the list out of here. Cool. So essentially, there's my home, and then with inside my home is list. So I guess we can um, add a class here, which is home. And I'm going to add a new home class. I'm going to add a background one pixel red solid. So should show up if I did this correctly. 
and it's saved. So my class equals home, background, one pixel red solid. Oops, I actually, not background, I meant border. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so here's the border. We know this is the my home component has list view in it. But let's say we wanted this list view to be loaded dynamically. So we can actually do it the same way we did it in this router file here. So I'm gonna copy and paste pretty much everything from here into the my home. So we have something like this, but instead of having about, obviously we're gonna have list. And this will be, instead of views, it'll be components. And since we're in the same folder, we can just grab it here. We'll do dot slash components slash and this will be list.view. And list is defined but never used, so we'll just delete it here. And it can't resolve components list.view, so we just need to make sure we don't have dot view at the end. So now we need to, we've imported this in dynamically, but a good example of how this works is let's say we surround this div, this list in a div and put a VF, I don't know, to show or not to show it. So we're gonna create, um, we're gonna create a new button that says show list and it's gonna have a click handler and it's going to either show or not show something. So we'll put in show equals not show. So we want it to kind of toggle it on or off. And then of course we need to create a data object then in that case and we'll return an object and we'll call it show and we'll just set that to false. And so what this is saying, only show the list if it's true, otherwise don't show the list. And we know that this list is only dynamically, it's dynamically imported in. So let's take a look what happens. So if I look at my network tab and I refresh it, now I see list as a chunk, just like we saw with the about page. Now list is also being prefetched, so it's not being shown directly. And so it, it's kind of being loaded in the background. And now if I click on the show list, it shows. If I click off, it doesn't show. So now I've dynamically included this list view only when it's needing to be shown. It's prefetched in the background and it's not going to load until the button is clicked, essentially, but it is being prefetched. So that's how dynamic imports work. Now you can do all sorts of things. This is essentially a promise. So you could in fact, like catch the promise and then display something here at this point. Uh, let me show you guys an example of, of doing this. So we can create a whole new, I don't know, a whole new import here. So I'm gonna call it list I. And from there you can define a bunch of variables. So and I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this catch right now, since we don't care. So this is something I have never done, but it's something that I know if you get into really crazy uh, apps that are dynamically importing every single component, then you may wanna do this. So now you can set the import here, component, and we'll do import. So we'll just take pretty much this whole import here and we'll copy and paste it and we'll add it to here. We'll delete this and we'll have a loading. So you can actually create like loading components. So I don't know, let's create a loading component. We'll do that in a second. We'll create an error component and then you could have a timeout. So I don't know, 3000 seconds if you want. So I don't actually don't have a loading or error component. So I'll have to create those. So let's create them real quickly. I'll click new file loading component dot view and then we're going to create a error component dot view and we're going to vbase cs and i'll just call this one h3 error and the loading view component once again we'll do vbase here we'll call i don't know we'll make this an h1 how about that h1 i can get this and it'll be loading. And then if we go back to our uh, list view, or actually my home view, 
Now we have this loading view and we can import them in. So just like we did before, so we'll import loading component from at sign slash components slash a loading component that view and we'll do the same thing for our air component air component dot view oops air component and now we have both of these and now we can actually use this list i in here so instead of putting something like this we'll just put in list i and well we can you know what let's just call it list okay so let's see here we have a couple of errors error component is now defined let me fix uh let's fix this this is a couple typos all right so now we have a whole bunch of things that'll happen if for for some reason when we try to load this component that has an error or it takes a long time to load like our network's really really slow so if i hit show list here you saw the first second there it popped up loading component and then it shows list view i bet you if i put the let's say if we can go to the network tab again and we change it to slow 3g and i hit show list again so it's already loaded so let me reload the whole app Okay, so it's loaded here, and we're in the slow 3G setting. So if we click on show list, you see this loading banner right here, and then it displays list of view. So that took a second to go ahead and load it on the screen there. Uh, so that's essentially what you can do since we created this loading component and error component. And if for some reason it didn't load within three seconds, you can show the error component. So it would show the error. I don't know, if we change this to I don't know, half a second maybe, 500 milliseconds. Okay, it's loaded. So if I press show list here, there could be a chance that it will not be loaded in time. So let's see what happens. Okay, so now it went to error because it didn't load fast enough and now it shows the error component. So you can see that's kind of a neat way of, of handling the situations. You can now dynamically import it in and set these uh, asynchronously imported in and then have like loading and error states so it's pretty neat